Um, so hello everyone. Uh, we're here today uh, again uh, with uh, another webinar, which is the updates webinar. Um, and today we will be speaking to you about updates related to the work that has been done for the past period in IFMSA um, and what are the most important things that you need to know so we can save some time uh, from the presentations uh, during the president session uh, and also to keep you updated and informed with the discussions that will take place in March meeting. Um, so again, today we have in the webinar IFMSA Executive Board, we have uh, the VPPRC Jose, the VPA uh, Nibosha, uh, VPE Michael, uh, VPCB uh, Georg, uh, VPM Fabrizio, and then VPF uh, Ahmed. Um, so we're going to go straight forward for uh, our uh, updates webinar, and uh, we're going to start with the first update uh, with the Vice President for Members, Fabrizio. Yeah, we review commit March meeting, and we have released uh, a report for the NMO presidents, uh, where the analysis of the candidates for um, um, for for like submitting candidatures for the March meeting uh, for uh, candidate members and also for full membership have been have also uh, been reviewed together with the regional directors in order in order to make amendments to their uh, candidatures um, for the March meeting. In NMO report, and after receiving all the information and the, the um, answers to the animation have been divided according to um, the area of work of different officials, and based on that, we, we have officials and also to the task. Fabrizio, it might be better. Uh, if you turn right. off your Permit camera, to do. yeah, yeah, um, I, I, I did. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, I hope I don't keep cutting now. Um, but what I was saying about the NMO report is that um, so in regards of that, during the president sessions, there's also going to be a session on. Uh, the NMO report findings for the general information about internal work. Um, for the recruitment of members, we have um, for this GA, which are IFMSA Dominica and FGMSA Fiji, uh, and one uh, NMO applying for upgrading the membership, which is uh, Coms Kosovo. Uh, and this is also related to the work that um, have been done and the, the uh, reports that, or documents that have been reviewed by the membership review committee, as I mentioned before. Uh, all of them were submitted on time, and also the um, review all that they have to, to submit by February 1st was were done on time as well. For the communication, we have continued uh, last term's strategy in terms of the standard price in the for the skin and care of together with the officials in terms of all the communication that goes to the NMO server and the IFMSA general Yahoo group. And for the external part is the VP who is also caring uh, about working with the liaison officers uh, in order to keep and ensure uh, a good ways of communication and uh, very understandable for the NMO presidents and the members in general. And for the strategy, uh, we have been working with the directors in order to uh, uh, yours uh, most uh, currently we have done an assessment on which topics are we going to address in these models uh, this information was gathered in the NMO report and during Tom 3 we're going to have final discussions in order to work mm. with um, the next slide okay um, okay uh, thank you, Fabrizio. Um, and uh, are, yeah, I, we can't hear you anymore, Fabrizio. Uh, are you still speaking? You can't. No, we can't. It was cutting. Yes. Um, it's still cutting. Um, so maybe we we move to the next. Um, topic and then we, we can come back if the uh, connection is better and uh, also uh, if you 
uh, this also reminds me to say that if you have any questions uh, or any inquiries about uh, whatever we are speaking about or anything that has been shared on the server, feel free to ask it through the chat and we will try to answer it either if it was related to the topic that is being discussed immediately or at the end of uh, the webinar. Um, so we move now to the next uh, topic, which is IFMSA social media. Uh, and we have uh, the VPPRC, which is, uh, which is Jose. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk about social media and everything that we have been doing for the past few months. Uh, starting off with social media, um, these are our numbers for Facebook. You can see our total number of views uh, throughout the months. Um, you can see the peak uh, in January since we have a lot of announcements and a lot of things for you to know uh, for the March meeting preparation. So, of course, this period is more... Um, you have more publications and more posts during this time. You can see here that the followers have been increased uh, since last year. So we have more than 20,000 people uh, since March meeting last year. So in a year, we were able to increase our reach. Uh, most of the followers are women, um, similar to last year. And the ages are kind of similar as well. So the main group of our aim of our reach is 18 to 24 with the most um, being in women 26 percent some highlights from facebook as well you can see that um, for the past 28 days we had new uh, um, new users um, also for facebook um, as a lot of post reactions um, more than a thousand and five hundred um, and you can see also the reactions uh, according to the number of events um, below. And also the post shares for the past 28 days, which was 182. Then we have Twitter. In Twitter, you can see a lot of uh, numbers here, uh, mostly are positive numbers, as you can see. This month we had um, so far 16 tweets. Um, 105,000 impressions, um, a lot of visits, more than 3,000, uh, 202 mentions, and this is all positive things. Um, and you can also see throughout the several months below, which I'm not getting into. Um, and then in Instagram, these are the numbers. Um, mostly we have women as a target group. We also have men, of course, but uh, this number has been increasing. Last year, it was 59%. This year, a bit more. Uh, to, um, and also, regarding the website, you have a lot of numbers. Um, and you can see that more than 70% of the people who visit our website are new. Uh, so they have never visited our website through that computer or their IP address. Uh, so this is a good indicator for our reach as well um, and a lot of good numbers like 139,000 users that reach that we reach uh, since the beginning of the term um, a lot of views as well half uh, almost 600,000 uh, views as well um, yeah this is pretty much what how we are doing for our website for youtube you can also see um, our different peaks because we don't release videos every day, we have different peaks uh, throughout the time. I'm not getting into it that much, but we collect it every month. So in the end of the term, we will do a more um, permanent, like more detailed report about these uh, statistics. Regarding marketing strategy, we have um, moved on to paid companies since the last time I talked to you. Uh, we had an informal consultation with marketeers uh, they are close to us, and we selected three companies to con contact. In the end, we, we decided to move forward with IG IJC, uh, which is in Portugal, and uh, the marketing service contract is being was analyzed by us and by the subco and is currently signed. So they are already, they already started working on this. Regarding GDPR, we are doing great. Uh, we have been consulting with DLA Piper. We have signed the DPAs with the relevant externals. 
and we have uh, reviewed all the documents uh, to to create the DPA to be signed with NMOs. Uh, you you might have noticed we proposed a bylaw change uh, proposal. Uh, so um, yeah, this document will be contemplated for August meeting. So you will have to sign it for August meeting after we approve this bylaw change. Also, cookie policies we have been updating it and all the other documents that are necessary for GDPR compliance. Uh, in the end, we are, we are also preparing for the March meeting, the, the CI change, the voting procedures, and the publications that are relevant for this meeting. Uh, and also, of course, the task force for live streaming and online voting. And that's it from my side. And thank you so much for listening to us. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jose, for the thorough updates. Um, and if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to ask it through the chat. Um, and now we move to the next uh, part, uh, which is uh, IFMC alumni. Um, so from the beginning of this term, uh, we have been trying to work on the strategy because there has been uh, a lot of um, pending points in relation to the alumni from the from the first year of the strategy, uh, which was uh, under the goal unlocking the benefits of engaging IFMC alumni. Um, and as you know, we have uh, organized or announced that there will be a special gathering for uh, IFMC alumni during March meeting. Uh, but unfortunately, we did not receive enough uh, applicants for it, but we are still carrying it, but with uh, not so many uh, big numbers, uh, with very few alumni. However, the event is going to be carried out and we are going to carry the concept consultation uh, for alumni that we agreed on during the event. Uh, in addition, we have been trying to uh, work towards the alumni engagement framework, which is uh, one of the indicators that must be fulfilled within the strategy, um, and also updating IFMSA um, the alumni database. Uh, when it comes to the engagement uh, framework uh, for IFMC alumni, we have conducted uh, two surveys, uh, one which is targeted towards IFMC alumni and the other one towards IFMC officials and NMO presidents, uh, and we are trying to compare the results between them. The surveys were closed and uh, we are we have the results and we're, we will be sharing the results of the survey by March meeting uh, during the president session and the session for alumni. Um, and the reason for this uh, uh, survey is to actually determine the main uh, points and areas of the framework uh, because, uh, Jose, can you move the slide? Yeah. Um, because, uh, for example, uh, there we we want we are asking the IFMC alumni which uh, platform they would like to uh, to have as a communication platform for them, whether through LinkedIn or Facebook and so on. So we are collecting their ideas about the most important engagement platforms that they would like to have, how they want to engage with IFMC, um, and the framework is going to be built upon the results of the two surveys. Jose, um, next. Next slide. Yes, and next one. Um, and uh, that's that's it for IFMC alumni. Uh, what is going to happen after we do the uh, after we present the results of the survey uh, during March meeting? Uh, we are going to have the framework, but it's not going to be proposed for adoption during March meeting. It's going to be proposed for adoption in August meeting. But between March meeting and August meeting, we're going to try out uh, first trial for the framework. Uh, and we're going to implement the things that came up from the survey itself and according to the preferences of alumni and IFMC NMOs. Um, and accordingly, we're going either to edit the framework or continue with proposing it for adoption in March meet and August meeting. So it can be an engagement uh, framework for alumni in IFMC. And when it comes to IFMC uh, board of recommendation, um, we are trying to add new members for IFMC Board of Recommendation. The AB agreed on five different candidates. Uh, you can check their names in the AB minutes and we are approaching them so they can accept uh, whether they would like to become part of IFMC Board of Recommendation by March meeting. Uh, we are going to update you on that once we have their acceptance uh, for the invitation from IFMC. And we are as well uh, are invited them to attend IFMC General Assemblies and uh, we're going to have one of the Board of Recommendation members attending March meeting. Uh, which is Dr. Everton, uh, and you will be able to get to meet him if you are uh, attending March meeting as well. And the next slide. 
Yeah. Um, so that that was uh, the update for IFMSA alumni and uh, IFMSA Board of Recommendation. Uh, we also worked this uh, the part the past period along with the team of officials and IFMSA EB on something we call our little project uh, of restructuring IFMSA GAs. Uh, we try to do different uh, things and different approaches to the March meeting agenda and uh, to GAs in general to try to facilitate and to renew the uh, structure of our, our GAs to have new ideas and events because uh, we have been having the same general assemblies for a very long time and uh, we uh, need some uh, new uh, techniques and uh, new events that make our members uh, still be interested in attending IFMC GAs. Um, so we carried the consultation process. Uh, it was internally within the team of officials and then we gathered input from animals in March meeting uh, 19 input form. Uh, and after that, we analyzed the input received uh, and uh, we shared it. Uh, with a team of officials to be discussed while uh, structuring the agenda of March meeting. Um, and the new changes that were agreed on, uh, we added new events such as IFMSA French, uh, the global priority side events, um, and we uh, are discussing changes to the code of conduct and how we implement it in our GAs. Uh, we had some switching regarding the socials uh, and the breaks. Uh, and as you can see in March meeting 19, we are having the social uh, at the uh, in the morning, so we can also give the opportunity to members to uh, look around the place they are visiting if they are only coming for the period of the GA um, regarding trainings as well and the theme event. Uh, next slide, Jose. Yes, um, this was the uh, restructuring IFMS AGA's uh, analysis form, and it was also shared with animals through the inputs for uh, through the outcomes of Tom two. Uh, so, if you are interested about what ideas we have discussed and which ones we decided to postpone for August meeting and so on, you can check the sheet. Um, next one, Jose. Um, so that's it for restructuring IFMS AGAs. Uh, we are still thinking that uh, there's a lot of analysis that we need to do uh, regarding IFMS AGAs to actually implement bigger changes to the structure and to renew our GAs. Um, and we are going to continue the work from March meeting until August meeting. We are either going to propose a task force uh, for uh, discussing how we are going to restructure our GAs or a small working group. So we will be discussing this in uh, March meeting as well and deciding on the best possible way forward. And hopefully the new changes and the new events we are having uh, are going to be uh, implemented well. Uh, and we're going to see all together what's going to happen in March meeting 19. Um, also, if you are watching and if you are head of delegation or uh, an animal president, please encourage your members to attend the new events. They are uh, new things and new changes and uh, IFMC officials put a lot of effort to organize them and they are going to be very beneficial for our members as well. Um, and now we move to the next topic, which is IFMCA programs with uh, Nibosha. Hello, everyone. Uh, so for the programs, as you know, enrollment form was adjusted to reflect the new structure. Then um, after that, we, in the past period, had a surge of activities enrolled for the activities fair and ex cross awards, and they are currently in the process of um, being enrolled. And it's, this should be done before the March meeting. Then we're going to look into all the activities enrolled between June 15th and October 1st of last year, because those activities were enrolled to a different form. And so we need to adjust them to the new system. Then we also worked on collaborating with standing committees and PCs are members of the sessions teams. And they also were members of different campaigns and activities done with them. I'm going to keep a track uh, to tracking sheet for all these activities in order to hand them over to the next team uh, as a part of good practices in this uh, in this term. Then we also worked on identifying and updating some documents like the programs toolkit, which should be done in the next couple of days. And uh, I also found other documents that need to be updated in March. Then the competency model was worked on. Um, in the, in the beginning, I only had uh, the outline of what to do, and through it, I was able to do some things for the activity enrollment, but for the other things, they need to be developed a little bit more uh, in order to be more productive. It's going to be done in March, in March and April, and hopefully in the future, uh, the next uh, VPA is going to have a full competency model prepared already in October and uh, November. And then I'm working on streamlining program annual report in order to uh, have it reflect on the, our work on the global priorities, SDGs, uh, and also in order for it to be easier to read and compare between different programs uh, and maybe have some summaries, kind of like abstracts for uh, researchers, um, because currently the program's annual report is very long. 
Uh, then um, I'm also proposing some changes to include IFMSA activities in programs. I'm mostly referring to activities done by different officials and their international teams uh, that are currently not being reported to the programs uh, if they're not being reported by some NMOs as their own activities. Then I also created a programs folder that's supposed to be shared together with the programs video introducing the PCs team. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Then uh, in the regional meetings, in America's and EMR regional meetings, we had sessions for the programs. Uh, I'm going to talk with the RDs to see how successful they were in order to evaluate uh, what kind of sessions we can conduct in different regional meetings in the future. In March meeting, we have nine PCs attending, my program support assistant and three uh, program representatives. Unfortunately for one program, we're not going to have a program representative, but the other PCs are going to cover for that. Uh, in the March meeting, we're not going to have a program stream session this term because we have lower priorities, which kind of share the same team. For the activities fair, we have all the applications done, all of them were informed. I'm finalizing the list today and the sharing instructions on what to prepare. Um, the booklet is going to be completed in a couple of days. I'm very happy that many of you agreed to be presented there, uh, and I'm glad that you liked the idea. Um, when you look at the booklet, I would like you to maybe look at the idea behind the activities fair booklet uh, because design is still to be completed and it's going to be finalized the for august meeting for now it's uh, just a basic design and i'm also working on a competition we have some different small ideas uh, for small time competitions instead of the large scale competition that we had in the past uh, we're going to have a place for pcs to be there and visible at the activities fair for you to ask any questions you have for them for different programs and uh, maybe some assistance you need and also we're going to have short 15, 20 minute trainings on different topics uh, developed by the CBIT. And you should check the CB survival kit for that. Rex Crossley was uh, finalized and top 10 activities are going to be shown in the social media prior to March meeting. Next slide. And then um, don't forget about activity management toolkit. It's a very useful document. Go to next slide. For the future plans, we are planning a full revision of program section on ifmsa.org. Um, and uh, through that as well, we're going to include the resources um, database there. Uh, we, I'm also thinking about a system to easily identify which program you need to enroll your activity. Um, I need to figure out some technical aspects, although I have a very good idea how to achieve this. Uh, activities database is still uh, going to be updated. To, uh, important the layout and the new activities. The newsletter and PCs report will be shared after March meeting. Uh, and we're also going to work on collaborating with the LOs to have programs that are represented in the uh, external representation work. And in the um, period between March meeting and August meeting, I'll work on finalizing my annual working plan regarding programs. Can you go to the next slide? And then I'm also giving an update on the secretariat. So for the secretaries, we're going to have a concrete session at March meeting together with IFMSA secretary who's going to be present there. I'm also going to release a half annual report before the GA, uh, but all the information in the report is going to be repeated there on the spot in the session. So you may check EB minutes 12 for the past secretariat update. Uh, and um, one of the new EB minutes is, also has uh, an update for the secretariat. Archives were sent to um, our new offices, except one package from uh, AMC, which is still, I don't know why it was returned, basically. Um, we're also working on our registration in Denmark, and uh, we're looking into maybe changing the bank or how we're working with the bank in order to make it, um, make it easier for us. Um, and we're also afterwards going to look into systems in place in Denmark to which we can apply for funding, interns, and overall support from the government. Next slide. Um, and um, in the past period, I've Mr. Secretary took over a lot of tasks uh, that um, was planned for the secretary, especially the Annex 1 tasks, uh, as, uh, uploading the submissions and coordinating the submissions, sharing them with the CCC and so on. I was only included partially there in order to supervise and um, tell Yvonne a little bit of fine details about what, what should be shared, what shouldn't be shared and so on. Overall, we're very satisfied with her work. And um, we're going to meet with uh, Yvonne during the G8 to discuss future plans for the Secretariat. We also received suggestions from IMCC Head of Secretariat for improvements. And we're going to be discussing them during our EB meeting before Tom 3 and also discussing them with Secretary at the G8. Thank you.
Um, thank you, Nibosha. Um, and now we move to the next part, which is iPhone say global priorities. Um, so this is also a very uh, short update about iPhone say global priorities. Um, as you know, we have adopted the new system only in uh, August uh, in last August meeting, and we have been uh, working on it since then. Um, and the work has been going really well within the team of officials. Uh, we are we distributed the global priorities uh, to the team of officials, to, uh, so part of them can work on them internally, and the other part can work on them externally. Um, and we have uh, been focusing on reporting uh, IFMC achievements internally and externally, and linking them so we can um, achieve the alignment of work, uh, which is uh, part of IFMC strategy. Um, in addition, this term uh, we tried to integrate as well a lot of capacity building uh, for the global priorities. Uh, we had a workshop about the global priorities in the Americas regional meeting and uh, one which was accepted for you reach me, but it might um, be cancelled due to the attendance. Um, uh, also, the capacity building uh, team and uh, the VPCP has been working on videos for promotion uh, for the uh, global priorities. Um, we have been having uh, a, a little bit of focus on uh, spreading awareness to IFMCA members about what are the global priorities and that's why and this GA as we said and um, all the participants of the GA already received an email about it uh, we're going to have six parallel uh, events for the global priorities during the GA and uh, you should register for them um, because uh, you can only enter the event if you register so if you are watching the uh, webinar please inform your delegation to register for it uh, the registration deadline is on the 24th of February uh, and these side events um, for the global priorities, they do not aim to spread awareness about the global priorities or, for example, to discuss a specific topic like universal health coverage and so on, uh, but rather to engage the members in actual life, uh, real life scenarios like simulations, uh, debates, um, compact like uh, creating declarations, uh, attending UN meetings and so on. So you can find the description of all these uh, global priority side events uh, that were sent to you and so you can check what type of events we are having. In addition, uh, we focus on integrating the global priorities to IFMCA bylaws, um, and this will be done in March. Meaning, hopefully, if the bylaws get uh, uh, are like if they get voted during the general assembly, um, we uh, we introduce the global priorities to IFMCA bylaws uh, and uh, with a set of of bylaws which entails with who is responsible for the global priorities and what are the global priorities and how IFMCA can work on them. Uh, in addition, uh, the evaluation processes, which is the most important thing, um, we are carrying internal and external evaluation and uh, we will produce a half annual report. Um, so hopefully by uh, before, before March meeting, we will be sharing a half annual report. So hopefully by the end of the year, uh, we will be able and we have all the capacity to uh, report fully on the uh, global priorities internal and external. So the report we are doing now is only a trial for the team of officials to understand how they can report on the global priorities internally and externally and for you as well to know the work that has been done in the past period. Um, and also I can um, also ask Michael to speak uh, about the global priorities from an external pers perspective as well. Thank you, Batul. In fact, uh, there is no much, not much to be added to your description. Basically, external global priorities is somehow connected to the internal in the whole evaluation procedure. What we've done at the beginning of the term, which was quite important, was that we uh, divided the responsibility over certain sectors of external global priorities among uh, liaison officers, because some of them are, are, are overlapping or they are not directly assigned to one of the liaison officers position. And afterwards, we also looked at the major reporting tool, what we have for external meetings, and we adjusted a few questions uh, to be able to properly include global priorities and their follow up uh, in the reporting procedure. So right now, coming to the first evaluation for the March meeting, we are able to go into uh, the reporting from external meetings, and we already have data on uh, the utilization of global priorities in our uh, attendance to external meetings. So we'll be looking on that. And uh, after the March meeting, we'll also look into the possibility of linking the sustainable development goals with our global priorities. So we will discuss this with also all the relevant sections of IFMSA internally and externally as well. <laughs> Okay, um, and, and as you can see here on the slide, uh, th this is our favorite sheet. <laughs> uh, this is the sheet that we use for, uh, for reporting of the global priorities. Um, and we have done the evaluation process, the first one during TOM2, uh, and then the second one, uh, we carried it out uh, throughout the past uh, 
few days and now we are creating the final report for it for the half annual report so you can understand what exactly has been done and this sheet will be shared with you as well so you can um, see which actions are ongoing as you can see in the sheet uh, which actions were done and which indicators were achieved um, so that's it for the global priorities um, now we, we move to the next section uh, which is IFMSA finances with uh, vice president for uh, finances Ahmed Ahmed, I think you're muted. <laughs> you're still muted. You yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for finances, we've been working on the financial reports. First of all, for the financial report for 15, 16, that's already been finalized and it's tabled for adoption in the March meeting. Wow. For the financial report for 15, 17, uh, the draft is already, on the, is already on our website and hopefully we'll have it the final version from our accounting firm by the August meeting. Also, I've been working on the reconciliations and following up with the August meeting 2018 and for the March meeting 2018. Um, the reconciliations are done. Uh, March meeting have submitted the report for adoption at the, at, uh, in Slovenia and the August meeting will be submitting the report uh, in Taiwan. So best for both. Um, also, there was some pending reconciliations from the regional meetings from last term. Uh, also, for the two re regional meetings which happened this term, the Americas, the Americas regional meeting and the African regional meeting, uh, we were already working on their conciliations, hopefully having them done by the March meeting. Uh, moreover, I'm also working on the, with the account with our accounting firm, MTH, for the bookkeeping of this term and to follow up on all the pending like, the financial reports and all the pending work from the previous terms. Uh, so far, I've submitted the quarter one uh, report, which was shared with the animals on the 8th of uh, February. The quarter one report is simply the budget report uh, since the 1st of October to the 31st of December. Uh, moreover, also providing like weekly budget updates and all our EB meetings. Uh, moreover, like we're currently working up with uh, being the contact person for the March meeting, we're following up with the OC and making sure everything is in place and everything is great. And by the way, they're doing some great work and they're doing uh, some awesome efforts to make sure that it's a, a legendary GA. Uh, moreover, there's also uh, for the pre-March meeting, there's a financial management and administration workshop, which are led by um, uh, Tamara from the uh, from the from the fundraising team and uh, Mariana, uh, Mariana from uh, Macedonia. Also, we've been working with or we've opened the call for the uh, TAF, uh, Travel Assistance Fund, and currently we're following up with the TAF residents to make sure that they get their visas and they have their flights booked on time. Uh, also, I'm, I'm currently being the EB, EB representative following up with the financial committee for the March meeting, making sure that they have uh, all the documents they need and everything they have prepared for them once they get elected at the GA. Also, we're following up with the animals who have debts towards IFMSA to make sure that they get their debts paid uh, before the March meeting or during the March the, during the March meeting before the second plenary to ensure that they have their voting rights. Uh, finally, we're also working on budget adjustments uh, and we'll be sharing that with the animals later on. Uh, moreover, uh, the fundraising team have been working on the grants database and we have already submitted a grant application since our last webinar uh, for Childmania Youth uh, Prize. Uh, also, uh, we have the funding requests and reimbursements. Everything is in is in place, and we're working on that to make sure that all all everything is just is uh, documented in our EB minutes, and nothing get, uh, gets lost in our emails. Uh, we're also making sure that the ethical fundraising framework is implemented in all IFMCA activities and all meetings and all meetings and regional meetings. I've also been exploring two new flight booking systems. Um, we will have the first, no, we'll pilot the first one during March, specifically to book the Tom Ford tickets, uh, and then we will evaluate the platform then whether to proceed and invest in that platform or not. Uh, as per the mandate that was adopted by Animals in August meeting in last August meeting in Quebec, um, we're, I'm currently working with the EB 1415 or the officials that's from term 1415. Since the financial report for that term is already adopted, we're working on the on the debts for the official. And hopefully, we'll have it done by then. Uh, special thanks to the EB. Uh, finally, um, we also have some other financial issues and investigations that are going on, and everything is being pulled up and is going on. Uh, very, very efficient. Thank you, Latour. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, and now uh, we move to uh, capacity building uh, with the Vice President for Capacity Building, Georg. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us. I've divided um, also my short presentation in a few different topics. Um, and I would like to start with the different platforms that we are working on um, as one of the major projects. Um, the one with the um, biggest progress so far is the online training platform with 
uh, great help from um, Jose and his team. So this will be a Moodle-based platform. Moodle is like an open source um, program which can be used online and is used by a lot of universities around the world. So we are currently already uh, working on setting the, the actual Moodle uh, server for us up so we can start working with it and, and share it with you as soon as possible. This will be a place where you can find uh, online training workshops, but just general information, everything um, on knowledge that we have in IFMSA over the time. Um, and at the same time with my online training assistant, we started working on an online training manual. So not only that we can deliver to you actual the workshops, but also if someone is interested in creating content for this platform that you can that you will be able to, to do this. Um, and the plan is that this will be part of the homepage. So for instance, in the future, you could go to training.ifmsa.org and you will find the information there. For the other two platforms, which is the trainer platform and the resource center, we also already discussed um, those platforms, which will all also be linked to the homepage, um, especially for the resource center, my resource and content assistant, Mashid already started to collect a lot of um, topics and content with the international teams of the standing committees, but also he is leading the small working group of facilitation methods. Um, so we also um, had an assessment of the actual resource center that we have, which is basically just a Google Drive folder um, and how the usability and everything is. So there's a lot of progress on there. Um, and we also aim to have it in the second half of the term ready for you to use. Um, the next part, please, for the next um, slide, is just also to give you some numbers on sub-regional trainings. We had so far in this term 24 sub-regional trainings happening. Um, also, of course, we had um, similar workshops happening in pre-meetings, uh, regional meetings, but also, of course, planned for the pre-GA. Um, and also a good sign is that, um, especially after regional meetings, we also saw an increase of submissions and interested NMOs in hosting sub-regional training. So already by now, just this day, we have 17 more sub-regional trainings that are either already approved or started to talk to the CBIT about interest um, in hosting them. Um, and those 17 are divided to all different five regions, which is great. Um, and at the same time, um, also internally, we are working um, with um, Duani, my general assistant, and especially Nebosha on the internal certification procedures in the sense of that we um, create a sustainable solution for avoiding having those delays in the future. So we're still uh, working on requests that we sometimes get, but also we would like to increase the um, or shorten the time after training event happening that you can get your certificates. Um, so to the next slide, um, since the last update webinar, we worked a lot on the internal operating guidelines. One of the big parts were the SRT procedures. This was mainly done with the standing committee directors during term one and two. Um, the main reason for this is that, that we um, realized as being part of previous OCs, but also talking to members that right now or the previous version, they were not really close to the reality of the OCs, meaning that some deadlines were so short to the actual event that they um, already needed to uh, starting trainer calls using um, graphics and so on. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes also um, things were not known at a certain time where you already need to submit documents. So we tried to make it more realistic and also to whom you need to communicate. Um, the second part was already mentioned shortly before, the online training in IFMSA. Um, so we um, included the different levels that we would like to see. So comparing, for instance, having um, just a reading or videos that you can attend all the time or something similar to an actual physical workshop, but just online. So we defined those different levels and also how you can uh, propose such uh, training events in the future. And also important um, as safety measures for both sides, um, we also included uh, different contracts. We just adapted them from the last time shared, um, but that there is a contract for trainers so they know um, they are reliable to the OC, but also the OC is reliable to them um, regarding promises that are made. But also for the SRT contract, we included, for instance, that the code of contact needs to be a part of this um, SRT contract so um, OCs are aware of this and also have the template to use the code of contact for their events. Next slide, please. 
Um, and then also some general updates um, we've been working on. And yes, it took longer than also expected to educational plan, but we are actually finalizing it and just need to, to finalize the, the final design also to send it out. Um, a small thing that also happened already is that when you go now to the homepage to the sub-regional training part, there is now an interactive Google map uh, event map with upcoming events, um, upcoming sub-regional trainings. Um, because in the in the past we only had the table which uh, we did not really manage to update all the time, but now we have this um, more interactive map. The tool already mentioned the global priorities video series. Um, the introduction video will be released tonight um, on all our platforms, so hopefully you will see it and share it with your members. Um, and also there were two small working groups from our side. One was facilitation methods, as explained before, collecting all the different things that you can use in the training workshop room. Um, but also a course on environmental sustainability. For this, we postponed it now after the March meeting because previously we had too little applications, um, but we definitely are still interested in creating this course on sustainability. So to the next slide, because um, we also would like to give a short update on what's going to happen in March meeting because we also figured out that there's a lot of potential for capacity building in the um, GAs. Um, so one of the parts for the restructuring chase was also that we do things differently than what we did before. So one of these examples is the animal management session, which will be really interactive. We have one day is only dedicated to a hackathon in the animal management session, but we also try to really um, help you create solutions for you and your NMO, for your local chapter uh, that you can work on afterwards. Um, in addition, we also wanted to be more transparent and uh, earlier organized, let's say, with training sessions. So in the um, capacity building booklet, you can find all the descriptions for the training sessions and also important, what is the experience level that you need to attend. Um, also the difference will be that um, because we have a TNT and a training advanced trainers in the pre-GA, this will be a mixed uh, teams for those training sessions. Um, also for the joint sessions, we worked, um, the standing committee directors worked hard to make clear um, outcomes and plans what they want to do in those sessions. So you um, have also those explanations there. And both of the registration forms for training sessions and joint sessions will also be shared tonight. So your um, delegates can already think about what they want to attend. It will be first come, first serve, so don't wait too long. Also, um, and very cool thing is that we uh, will have training booths during the exchange for an activity sphere. You can imagine then it's just very short inputs on different topics related to those two those two fairs. Um, one will happen during activity fair, one during exchange fair. Um, so stay also updated for this and look out for them. And um, the last point, the uh, capacity building treasure hunt. We said that learning does not always need to be in this very formal setting or even in a uh, workshop setting, but we also said it can be different. So we will have a treasure hunt. Um, again, in the CB booklet, you can find instructions what you need to download before. Um, so during the GA, you will can find different places to learn about sustainability um, all over the place. And I think there's, no, not more slides. So thank you. And I think my Thank you so much, uh, Georg, uh, for the update. Um, and make sure that you uh, sign up for all of these nice things that <laughs> Georg mentioned in the slides. Um, we can now move uh, finally to external presentation uh, and Michael. Thank you very much, Batul. Uh, so very quickly to the external representation. Um, since the beginning of the term, the guiding principle for our external representation efforts is basically global priorities document, where our liaison officers and me as the VPE work on uh, external goals. Uh, right now, coming up to the March meeting, we are also working on the evaluation and contributing to this half term uh, knowledge of our work on global priorities. Since the beginning of the term, we started to work on uh, uh, external meetings calendar and mapping out the general meetings for the NMOs. So both the sheets with uh, IFMSAs attended external meetings and the uh, regional external meetings map have been shared with NMOs through emails. Uh, we've been also working on several updates on our webpage, uh, including updating the, the list of partners and adding completely new tab for NMOs to, uh, on how to work on submissions of policy documents drafts for the general assemblies. And then uh, also during the upcoming months, we'll continue working on that. And also liaison officers have updated their subparts of their respective areas. 
Uh, we've been working on a selection criteria and applications to external meetings, which were again updated. And uh, thanks to the thanks to Charlotte, the as an officer to WHO organizations, we've been also happy to to create and launch the manual on uh, how to write applications for external meetings. And we really hope that this tool will again increase the quality of applications we receive for our delegations. Uh, since uh, October, I've been sharing the regular monthly external meeting updates with the links to all the reported external meetings and also with general news about our external representation. Uh, for the most important events outside of the scope of liaison officers' work, uh, we've been working on the pre WHA and World Health Assembly itself, the high level political forum, which is uh, coming in two editions for this year one in July and one in September during the United Nations General Assembly. And then also the highlight of this year is the high level meeting on universal health coverage, which will take place in September, 2019. And we've just started today uh, with sharing the information with NMOs. Uh, I've shared the survey of UNC 2030. So please, if you can uh, just share it with your members. The UN task force is also working quite hard on their SDGs initiative and their external representation members are working with liaison officers and helping are helping them with their own work. And we've also released numerous press releases, abstracts, articles, blog posts, or applications to external meetings. And this is also regularly being followed up on with the Vice President for uh, External Affairs. One of the unfortunate things was the resignation of liaison officer uh, to sexual reproductive health and rights, including HIV and AIDS, which happened in December. And since December, the VP is taking uh, care of the organizational aspects of these positions and also the coordination of delegations to LRA's meetings for the upcoming months. Uh, but uh, hopefully during the March meeting, we will get uh, the new LRA elected and that person will be able to uh, take up the work and continue in our efforts. Next slide. Um, so just very quickly to external meetings. So far uh, until this day, we've attended 37 meetings on behalf of IFMSA. Uh, 32 are already reported and the reports are shared with NMOs. Uh, we've been also adjusting a bit the reporting system for this year to somehow enable the tracking of global priorities. And we are also trying to follow up on the IFMSA strategy and to create somehow a ground for impact assessment of our external activities. Uh, this will be very difficult, but still we started the process and hopefully we'll get some uh, tangible results. Next slide, please. So these are just highlights from the external meetings. So you can see that when it comes to global priorities, the, the highest is uh, universal health coverage and meaningful youth participation, but also basically all of them were covered by our external meetings. Next slide. Uh, we are also tracking the usage of policy documents. Uh, this is very important for external meetings, but honestly, we, we, we would be very happy to start tracking the implementation of policy documents also by NMOs and on the internal level, but uh, this is very difficult and we are very happy to open a dialogue about that with NMOs during the GA. Next slide. Um, so, as also Nebosha mentioned, we are trying to somehow include the activities of NMOs and program coordinators into external representation. Uh, we are already right now tracking the usage of uh, data uh, originated in programs in our external meetings. But as you, as you can see, we've only used it for uh, six meetings so far. So the, the amount must substantially increase. And we will be working with, uh, with program coordinators and the VPA to enable that to happen during the next months. Next slide. Uh, very quickly about the policies, since they were also covered during uh, yesterday's webinar. So uh, for the March meeting 19 policy process, we got 11 policy proposals. Uh, we've been still, we, we will still release the policy reviewing committee report one day before the General Assembly. And we are all already working on that report and uh, we will have policy discussions during the GA as well. Uh, one of the interesting things to explore for the future is um, uh, to somehow perhaps reform the structure of policy processes in IFMSA because we've been receiving uh, quite constant concerns about the structure and process uh, of the policy documents creation, which is very complicated, not only for NMOs, but also for liaison officers. And we've been also approached by several of our partner organizations, especially student organizations who express their interest to join IFMSA small working group if this is going to happen after March meeting uh, to, to create some joint uh, policy approach towards global health topics with them as well. So we will present this idea to NMOs. And lastly, as the final part, the connection of external representation and finances, which uh, we've explored for the first time ever. And the idea is to, to somehow explore the benefits uh, external representation in is bringing to IFMSA. Uh, we can move the slide to uh, the calculations. 
uh, because uh, maybe you know that the, the whole external representation team, which includes uh, the VTE, the as an officer, regional directors, and perhaps anyone who is somehow supported and mandated by the executive board to, to represent IFMSA, uh, this whole group has the, the budget for these activities of only 14,000 euros. So we started somehow collecting the, the benefits apart from grants, which external representation officers and actions bring to IFMSA. And right now, uh, the, the summary of all these uh, reduced or covered fees, discounts, support of delegates is over 14,300 euros. And we are still counting uh, additional benefits. And many of them are even not uh, counted in this, this number. So we'll be also presenting the data to NMOs during March meeting. And completely final slide. So uh, the plans of external representation for March meeting. So we will have that policy document discussions. We have team event on gender and health with very interesting externals attending. Uh, during president sessions, we will talk about MOUs and policies and we will have the external representation update session, which will include updates from VPE, we as an officers, UN task force. And uh, we will also reflect the external global priority side during the side events, which Batul mentioned. So I'm looking forward uh, to seeing you in, in uh, Porto Roche, and that's all for Xtrap for now. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Michael, uh, for uh, the updates about external representation. Um, and now uh, we reached the end of our webinar. So if you have any questions, we received some questions through the chat. So we will be answering them. And if you would like to ask anything, make sure that you uh, send your question now because we will be ending the webinar uh, shortly. Um, and uh, also after the webinar, if you watch the webinar uh, offline and you have any questions, make sure to send them at eb at ifmsa.org uh, um, and check the survival kits and the president's agenda uh, and the president's session survival kit as well. Uh, because this will be helpful for you during the GA. Uh, if you're facing any difficulties in preparing for uh, the GA, make sure to reach out for your uh, officials uh, in the body system, in the TONMO body system, uh, and they will definitely be supporting you and helping you with, uh, with whatever you are needing or approach uh, the AB through the email. Um, so now we can move to the questions. Um, we have a question about uh, GDPR, uh, Jose, or? Yes, wait a moment, yeah. I have to check the question. Um, so can we see the final GDPR related document that will be signed before we are supposed to adopt them? So yeah, um, this document will be um, shared with you uh, in a timely manner. So now we are adopting the bylaw that um, obliges NMOs to sign it. So then we will share the, the documents before, uh, so in the next month, hopefully. Um, and, and yeah, you will have some time to provide some input if you want. Uh, this document uh, has already been reviewed also by the subco, but uh, you will have a lot of time to review it until August meeting when you are supposed to sign it. Yeah, okay. Um, are there any other questions? Can, I, just, can. I just have a reminder. So yeah. um, if you haven't already filled in the or updated the fmsa.org NMO profile, please do so, uh, so that you do not lose voting rights. OK. Um, I can't see any other question on the chat. Uh, is that right, guys? <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I cannot see any other. OK. OK, so I think uh, we, we reached the end of our webinar, and uh, if you would like to ask anything, uh, you know where to uh, send your questions, uh, eb at ifmsa.org, um, and we will be fully available to answer any uh, of your questions uh, from now until the GA. Uh, so thank you so much for attending, and um, uh, we look forward to see you in person in March meeting. It's only a few days, uh, and we're very excited for uh, March meeting, and we hope that you are as well excited for March meeting, and see you all there. Um, so thank you and see you in a few days. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.